how are you doing? Right. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm even better because I've just been had the album on repeat just the last few days. I just can't stop listening to it. It's brilliant, man. Excellent. I see you there, Dick. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it. Oh, yeah, I've heard it quite a few times already. And it's, I mean, it, it didn't even need time to grow. I mean, it's just fantastic. I love it. Yeah, but it's quite. Oh. It's good. It's it's great that you've heard it because obviously up until now. I've been talking about it, and obviously people had not heard it, so it, and it's obviously been getting passed around now. But um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty instantaneous in its energy and its verb and its identity. Um, you know, I mean, it, side two is just like thrilling. I don't know if you. I mean, I've listened to it on vinyl, so it, yeah, it's, it starts with "Love Is the Call" onwards, yeah. so, and uh, and but it's it's and it opens with "Bluebirds," like which is just something that you've got to kind of. It's like a little thing you tune into through the ether. It just comes in, little, like a little blossom. Leaf yeah, or, you know. I mean, based on, sorry to interrupt you, but the, 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 the first singles that you released, I want, did a song like Bluebird kind of took me took me back. I love it, but it's something I didn't kind of expect to kind of, to yeah. kick in as the first single. Now, was, was that difficult to choose that as the first single or was that always going to be the first single? Because I know that you played it live when you played on your, on your own yeah. a few times, no? You mean, uh, yeah, Bluebird was the, fir the first track. It's the, um, you know what? We just had it. I mean, I was messing around with the track listing and it, we just, I was going to start side two with it. And um, I don't know, I just thought, such a beautiful little moment. And it's not, you know, I don't think anybody could listen to that song and then go, I'm not into this album, you know? Right. It's kind of like just, the, as I said, it's like this little, this little, like, um, like a little sound coming across space or a little blossom just falling off the tree. It's just a little moment. Um, but with, with, and I love the, the kind of sentiments of it. And um, we just thought, why don't we just start the album with that? You know, or kind of people that are expecting like, you know, which is yeah, you know, exactly I, what I mean. Yeah. 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 So it kind of leads you in a bit, I guess, you know, I mean, it, You've got to listen to the, the the second track. That was another theory of mine. Like, and also, I just thought it was such a beautiful thing. It's a bit of a kind of quite a bold statement, really, that we feel comfortable, you know, putting that as the opening track. No, it's great. It's always like kind of like the calm before the storm, in, in a good way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want you to. I know you've been doing loads of interviews. I don't want you to kind of keep repeating yourself. But I saw you on um, Graham Norton the other day on, on Virgin Radio. And he was kind yeah. of you. You kind of explained to how how you kind of you this time round uh, you'd been speaking to Alan McGee, and he and and you kind of you didn't weren't sure what to do next. And he kind of said, just make the record that you need to make, mm. um, and forget all the bullshit. When he was talking about forget all the bullshit, what was that? What was he actually kind of talking to you about in that conversation? Um, what happened was Alan came, you know, uh, got involved with the band just as I'd finished recording uh, Kicking Up the Dust. And um, which is the, the 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 album previous to this, and uh, I was just kind of, you know, talking to him about like, you know, do you think we'll get a break, or do you think, do you know, do you think we might, you know, the way the see, this is what normally happens is you make a record, and there's you know, it's got good songs, it's got you know, and and all things like that, and there's the kind of neediness you feel like, you know, you want people to like it and you want to see if you can get a break for the band, the band, you know, been away for a while and all that. And, and Alan was like, you know, he just turned to me and he just said to me, John, he said, what you've got to do is just go away and write a fucking great record. He said, I know you can do it. And he said, and it, he said, when you do that, he said, we don't need a break off anyone. We don't need any favours. We don't need, you know, oh. he says, because it'll just, you write a great fucking record and nobody can fuck up. You know, it, it just is what it is. Um, whether people like the band or not, you know. Um, and it just kind of was a, it was a home truth. I just, not that I, I regret any of the songs I've written and things like that, but I just... It just instilled the beliefs that I'd already been playing with in my head as about, about you know writing a seminal record, uh, and I knew I had to go and do that and do something that had an identity, something that had an energy, and I wanted, as I said, the the inspiration for this record was something that I'd been mulling over for a long, long time. I just hadn't really found the true way of expressing it. For, on, on my behalf, um, you know, I knew there was a place 
post laws, pre all change that I hadn't really got to grips with. I hadn't really let the idea flow properly, although I knew I wanted to express that part of me, you know. Um, maybe that was due to like the band being, you know, it's, it's all about time. And I mean, you, ideas come to the fore. They can be on the back burner for a long time. But yeah, it was certainly the, the conversation with Alan. He kind of just reconfirmed what it was that I already knew I had to do. And Alan, when I was writing demos and, and starting to write some songs for this record, what is the call? Uh, there's a song actually called I Don't Know, which, um, which isn't on the record. It's good enough to be on the record. Um, but we had a song, I think... Um, I have been waiting. It's a bit similar in, in its verb and its its vibe. And we just got to the point where we didn't want to repeat ourselves. I think, you know, just going off on a tangent, when um, we did, where we had 10 songs, youth just looked at me and said, here's your album, John, you've got it. And I went, well, I've got some more songs that I need to do, right. you know. And he said, no, this is your record. This plus Bluebird, it turned out. But anyway, getting back to what you asked, I mean, the first song... Was a song called I Don't Know, and it's kind of like very early Stones, slightly Lars-ish kind of vibe. And uh, and I just knew that that was the kind of way I wanted to, you know, I, I, I had that in me that I needed to express. It turned out the whole album found its own identity. But I played that to Alan, and he was like, you know, fucking hell, John, that is brilliant. And he said the same things as me. He said, it's like the early, it's like, early stones it's like the laws it's like it's like cast but with that that, that rock and roll swing and I, and that was the kind of record i was trying to do as i said without parody and you know I'm, or trying to reclaim any ground that wasn't mine to claim but just em embracing the wholeness of the two sides of the coin really you know bass player john power the laws singer songwriter cast john power you know, and somewhere between the two, you know, we stand back to back. Um, and, uh, and that was really what it was. But it was Alan who, you know, I didn't, I think when it, at, that, at that stage, it was, it was, it was my drive. I was on a serious drive. I was very kind of um, focused, if that's the word, or driven. I was driven. I was up all, all day, I was playing my guitar, I was like, you know, and I was getting lots of ideas, but I knew I had to have the right ideas. Um, whereas in the past, I'd have just put all my good ideas, and maybe wrote, um, presented it as an album. So there's lots of really good ideas that didn't make this record, just because they didn't have the certain um, garage, rock and roll, punky rhythm going through it. Like, uh, But it's, so it was Alan, really, you know, I would... Yeah talk to him about it in the initial stages and I just you know um it was great because we both knew what we were talking about and I as a songwriter this is before the band had any clue what was going on really right. so this mission was 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 taking place I was on you know I was writing and I had the idea of, of the debut energy with my experience as a bass player and as those jumping kind of rockabilly sort of which is rock and roll and punk and and many other things depending on where you do it you know so that was that was the initial sort of flourish that that got me you know just got the momentum building and then it was just being true to it you know making sure that all the songs did have a um something between them that they all felt the same. They're of the same, they're all framed by the same picture frame, you know, they were written on the same canvas or whatever you want to say to it. There was, you know, the songs had to feel like they were all from the same sort of bag, identity, collection, um, intense intensity. Um, and even the kind of slower ones, like Bluebird leads you in, you know. Um, and then the album, I just think, blitz off, you know, it gets about, you get about four songs in and, and then it gets quite thrilling to say the least. No, it's great. I mean, obviously you said there that you, you kind of wanted to dis rediscover yourself in a way, no, of, of, of not yeah. rediscover, kind of dis discover something that you kind of hidden in, in, in yeah. your past, no. That must have been quite difficult because I mean, obviously you've been with Casper so, so long. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of ingrained in you, this kind of to play as a group and then obviously play yeah. as your own, as yourself, as a solo artist. Yeah. But to kind of, to, 
to go into not not into the studio, but to start writing songs with this idea that you want to be cast, but you don't want to be cast. You want to be the Lars, but you don't want to be Lars. That was seem really complicated to decide exactly what kind of criteria. I mean, you have explained it a little bit now, but it must have been no, you I must have been really kind of. That's a really good sort of point. questioning yourself. That's a really good point, right? But you know what? I just listening to you put, putting those two arguments forward. Actually, now that you said it, it was really natural. It right. was really natural for me. Um, I don't know if it was natural for the for the for the, for the band before they really kind of you know they they seen came the vision board, and yeah. came on board. And to be honest with you, I don't think the band really got it until we were recording the songs. I really believe that because they don't have that history, that DNA in their history. You know, right. they have cast, but they didn't quite know what it was. You know, I would you know if I was kind of saying, look, I want this. What I've just said to you. Well, they were probably don't. It's like it, it's not their, you know. It's like, well, I don't know really. They don't want to be another another band. album for them, no, yeah, yeah. They don't want to be another band, but but slowly, it all. As I said, it all actually came t- together in the recording. But it was what you just said. Then was you know it was it was quite perfect actually because it it was these two things, and when I'm explaining it, it sounds like they're fractured. But I've never left those experiences. They've never left me, really. In fact, I've made probably a few concessions in the past without realising it, you know, because right. it, it's funny when Cass started, we had an amazing drummer, Keith Skin, a great guitar. I had these great songs, you know, and the band just created its identity and its way of doing things, you're quite right. I wasn't going to go, oh, well, hang on let's do it like this because I don't think I was capable actually of playing the rhythm guitar like I am on this record I mean all the acoustic is playing is very very it's 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 quite you know it's not lousy but it, it's got that feel that and I don't think I could have done it earlier it would have sounded like a, a, an imitation of something that what you know as opposed right. to it being a true representation which it is now of what of the moment, and that's taken me a long time really to just sort of, as I said, it go right round in a circle. And I feel like I feel this album has completed the circle for me, in the sense that it's it it represents a little bit of my well, it represents both my my experiences without you know parody and either you know it's very much a cast record. I mean, yeah. Skin is playing. I mean, you've heard it, luckily, so I can talk to you. Skin is playing, I think, you know, some blistering sonic lead guitar on this record. Fantastic. Some of the best you've done, yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, I mean, I, I would, you know, without being derogatory to anything else, because they were all of a certain time, all changed what they know to cause. But I think it's his best playing. And I think Keith's drumming is his best drumming. I just, Keith has never, you know, been on the swing. He's never yeah. been on that. Yeah. Maybe because I was playing it straighter. On the acoustic or skin strip. Either way, you know, I was very, very determined to make the acoustics jump. And I think that's why I was determined to play the bass, because like say for instance on Love Is the Call, which was the first song that we we recorded with Youth at Space Mountain, you know, I played the bass as we were putting the track down. Um and you know it's like you know, it's a bit like that, and he has to, he has to play, and his whole body shifted instead of being over the kit with his head down, banging away. He was upright, his chest was out, and he was swinging. He was in his twenties again, now, yeah. I'd never seen him do. It. I'd never yeah. seen that position, and I actually was talking to him about. It. I was going, Keith, you've never sat up and. And, and kind of swung rock and roll, you know. You've always yeah. been over the kick. So there was a whole thing about the rhythms and everything. I'd forgotten what it was we were talking about. But, <laughs> no, I was just kind of saying that. Was it, it must have been difficult, kind of the criteria yeah. for you to separate it, what you wanted yeah. to create from Lars and, and it wasn't. No, it wasn't difficult at all. It felt really natural because I think this is a record that I've been meaning to make. I, for a long, long time. I mean, for a long time. And I, it was a record that cast, you know, I've said, you know, they needed to make this record and they hadn't made it. Uh, and I think I, that's why I was keeping my powder dry all them years. Because one, 
it had to be I had to be capable of, of playing the, the acoustics like they're played you know, on, on a lot of these songs and the, and, and the bass and, and and singing and all that and so otherwise the band would it would be a pale imitation of a true experience that I'd have had um, mm. it would have been like you know what what you see you know with other bands you know there's loads of them knocking around and all that and the, and the, the band are too good for that I mean Castor are you know an am amazing live band at the moment. We have been for the last few years. It, it, there's a looseness about the way we play, which brings a tightness, and, and that's something that you uh, you don't really know about um, when you're younger. I don't think you know yeah. because it's all it's all about like it's like <sighs> well, all of a sudden you're standing in the eye of the hurricane, and it's loose. But it's so tight, and and um, and that's something where the band are at. You know, I mean, they've earned the, these performances through mm -hmm. through years and years of playing. I think it's the band's best performances. I really think it's you know, I really think Skin and Keith, you know, on in that recording session, and myself, I, I play. I think these are the best perform um, recordings and performances we've done, definitely. <laughs> I mean, chatting to you about it, it just sounds almost as if it was almost like a cathartic experience for you. Well, it's like it's like cast us back, but almost like it, like you said, you said you wanted to feel like a debut album, and it's almost like a brand new band. Was there yeah. ever a thought in your mind of maybe of maybe kind of having the same members but calling it a new band or something else, just to kind of give it like a fresh start? Yeah. And it was that never an, an option. Well, no, because as I said earlier, this is very much a cast record, and I do feel that this is the record that cast needed to make but hadn't made. This is a record we hadn't, you know, this had to be made. This is this is cast, you know, filling the spaces, not not limiting themselves to the, to to a formula that the band maybe thought was theirs. Um you know I've pushed against them being around you know, I've done solo records, Stormbreaker with yeah. the Weeps, you know, Beatroot for instance. I mean, you know, they're not I mean I'm always up for change, but for me, it was a very cathartic experience because, as I said, um, my Lars experiences, they've never been, they've always been with me. And I haven't really been able to like, talk about them or I haven't really been able to bring them into the, in, into the fore because, I don't know, the, the, the timing just didn't seem right. And two, I didn't feel maybe I was going to be able to 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 give it to just not justify but give it a true um yeah you know to do it the yeah, right no, way yeah, yeah give it justice or whatever you know give it yeah. is that right uh, do it yeah, justice, do justice yeah. do justice to the to what you what you used to do yeah, in the band right? yeah exactly know, yeah yeah you know and, and i feel now honestly my you know my rhythm playing is, is you know it's in a really good good uh, place uh, and and that's from you know, if it's it's been so long, it seems. I mean, it's thirty years, I think, since nearly. It's twenty nine years or so. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I remember the first time I saw you guys. I think it was when you were support. It was a surprise support slot for Supergrass years ago. Yeah. In Hammersmith. Yeah. Well, it was, oh, yeah. Oh, well, it would be twenty nine, thirty years ago because it's definitely maybe thirty years this year, uh, and we were just behind that. Um, and the laws was even before that. So, I mean, these are like, you know, they're lifetimes, but. They're just, they're just never, the, the moment has never changed, you know. Yeah. I mean, the presence is is always with you. Uh, and uh, Definitely. it is a cathartic thing. I feel, I feel, I feel um, there's a, I, I keep saying like a kind of lib, liberated feeling, a kind of disconnected from, from, from it. Oh, I just don't feel that needy, like, you know, like how, I want. I just feel I've made the right record at the right time. That 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 I'm very proud and happy of. The songs are fucking great. I really love the energy. The band's performances are great, and I feel we've hit a sweet spot. You know. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, we talked yeah. about the music, but we can't not talk about the the lyrics as well because obviously, yeah. this album is, is obviously this album was you wrote it with a specific kind of reason in mind. So I imagine a lot of the lyrics. All the yeah. things that were running through your mind at the time were also kind of going kind of through the same things, no? 
I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, the I last mean, couple of songs, for example, is like "Time is like a river" and "Tomorrow yeah. calls my name," things like that. It just kind of yeah. feels like you're really yeah. kind of at this moment where you want to give things a switch things up a bit and completely yeah, just go in a different I mean, direction. Dude, they're two very deep songs. Then, the, the, I mean, actually, the lyrics on "Time is like a river," and I'm not going to dissect them too much because no, no. I'm expressing experiences and emotions that I. Have, I feel capable or close enough to, but also knowing that they are uh, wide reaching um, in the sense that other people will also know what we, you know, the whole transience of life, uh, the, the whole movements of it all, the whole idea like the time is like a river, you know, and, uh, you know, it's how it reaches out uh, endlessly and all our lives together just turning in the deep. I mean, it's it's abstract, you know, washing over you, washing over me. The verses in that are quite sort of, you know, they're re they're, there's a realism there. There's a realism to all of them. Um, there's a realism to uh, tomorrow calls my name. You know, it's that's a bit of a tearjerker, that, I think. That kind of gets, gets me and it, and it gets, a, you know, when I give myself to the chorus, tomorrow, you know, nothing lasts forever. And we're all just passing through. And, you know, we're all, all our experiences and all our losses and all our, our loves, our affections, our relationships, all the things we've agreed on and all the things that we never quite saw eye to eye. You know, that, that, it, it's a colourful sad beautiful life that we're, we're all living and, and I think that song is to try and to touch about things like that whilst also trying to be a great sort of you know Dylan-esque rock song or you know what yeah. I mean it's um they're all like that I mean even like the second song which is um uh, first smile ever you know that's quite a sort of um a real there's a real uh, there's a realism to the outlook you know, take a look outside my window. Tell me, what do you see? Just a world that does, you know, it's turned its back on you and me. Why do I feel so empty? Why am I running around on these empty dreams? You know, um, we've all been slightly let down, you know, society and what it's, what we, we've been hoping for, maybe, you know, you, yeah. you come to that sort of understanding that, you know, really, we're not society, you know, our, our, our leaders and so-called whatever institutions, they're not really looking after us as a, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, tolerant society for, for, you know, to look. They're, 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 you know, I mean, there's a lot of nepotism, cronyism, there's a lot of shit going down. And I'd say that song is, is very much of a present viewpoint I have. Although, like with most things I do, um, there has to be a... A, a return, an answer, and you know the chorus ends up being a, a very uplifting sort of. You know, you walk out the door, you've been walking this, you've seen all this so many times in your life, but today is going to be fucking different. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna shift it. Like, and I'm gonna, you're gonna be the person you want to be. You're gonna find the strength to 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 move out of or move on to whatever it is that you feel you, you, you've got to go. Uh, and I think. There's a lot of this, you know, sort of wistful uh, sensitiveness. I mean, there's a lot of rock and roll going on and there's a lot of like, you know, starry eyes. I mean, I, I'm, I'm going through them now, but starry eyes, you know, is they're all very relevant, I think, very much so. The verses, once again, like, you know, put on the fucking radio like, and, you know, after 10 minutes, you just... I mean, it's, it's like a fucking circus out there, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you just want to... So there's a whole thing going on about that, you know, just observational things about, you know, the state of the bloody, you know, the air we breathe, starry eyes. This ain't the dream that you... They said that you would find, you know, it's getting harder each day to survive. Um, oh, you're going to find out, baby, one way or another. You know, that you're going to have to... You're going to have to fucking stand up you know, because no one's going to give you nothing. Well, they'll give yeah. you, a, you know, they might give you a break here and there if you're lucky, but you know what I mean? But the yeah. song itself, the musicality, you know, uh, 
I, I, I love all them. So I love the, all that, you know, um, psychedelic sort of, you know, love you like I do in, into Love is the Call, into Starry Eyes, the bass line and the chorus, you know, kicking in like a, like a Stonesy vibe, Stonesy glam vibe or something or whatever, you know, into I Have Been Waiting, which is like this goddamn, like, punk folk, <laughs> God, country rock. I don't know what, what it actually is, but I, 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 I couldn't tell you either because it's just it's such a, a mix it. of different things in there. Yeah, I love it though. It fucking it just zooms in, and the story is great. You know, you're on your tail. It, it's slightly done esque You know, we're just you you you, you know you you you're, you're running from you, you you ditched your woman and you and she's she's on your case like you know and it's it's just a kind of story really it goes into yeah. a story. But um, I love that song, you know. There's, I mean, I love a lot of the songs. I'm, I'm, oh, they're all great. Get... I mean, it just doesn't let up. I mean, even even yeah. the slower song, it just keeps it just yeah, yeah. It keeps going. But it's it's like you said. It's I mean, it's not. I've, I had to listen to it on my uh, on on the link they sent me, but I, I can't wait to get hold of an an, uh, an yeah. LP because this is you need to listen to this on on an LP in order. Yeah. All yeah. the way through, because like the kids today, they just like listen to ten seconds of a song and they're on to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Well, that's that actually had a. I think I was playing with, like, side two, I think, was going to be side one. You know, initially, I was going to kick, kick it all off, all guns blazing. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I was like, oh, God, am I going to scare? Um, is it too... Because there's some really, like, there's some quite rich songs on there, you know? I mean, richer, maybe, like, more. And so I was thinking, how can I pull people in? Because I, there is that digital... I'm not really part of it, but yeah. you know, I am the digital yeah. thing where people just give it 30 seconds and click yeah. on to the next. Click on, they listen to the first four tracks maybe, and then they fuck it off if you don't like yeah. it, I guess. That's the way it is, yeah. No, <laughs> it's it is, that's the way it is, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, okay, well, maybe I should, like, that's why, why Bluebird is, is such a short little introduction. It's an interesting, mm -hmm. beautiful song, you know, slightly Bowie-esque, and um, in its chorus and all that, and, its sentiment, I think, is is very for me being a dreamer, like and all that. It's very, it's very moving. I'm trying to tell, you know, there's a fucking hell. I mean, there's a vicious world going on out there, like you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, people say, oh, you know, when we were kids, we used to play out. Now we don't let our kids out. It was, I mean, it's fucking. Yeah. There's a lot. It's it's fucking. It's 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 out there, like. So I'm just trying to say. You know all them dreaded stories that we've heard. That you know it can still be a wonderful trip, a wonderful journey, and a wonderful experience. So there's a bit of that, you know, that involved in it. Um, and uh, uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, and it just leads in. So what I don't, yeah, so that's what I was doing. You know, mm -hmm. letting, trying to bring them in a bit more calm. I didn't want to scare them all off, and people think, oh, this is just a complete and utter punk rock and roll psychedelic pop. Because there's a bit more to it than than just a brilliant drum beat and and a, and, and a bouncing acoustic and bass. You know what I mean? There's, there is some deep. Oh, there's a lot more to this one, yeah, yeah. But you have to go find it yourself, people. It's yeah, you know, it's your definitely. album to discover. Uh -huh. But obviously, I mean, you kind of rediscovered yourself with this album. But at the same time, and I, I was, I was, I think it was, I can't remember. I was, I was watching an interview that you did a while back, and you kind of you you got a bit kind of fed up of playing the same cast songs over and over again. But has Getting back as a band together now, creating something new and fresh, kind of breathe new life into the old songs. Will yeah. will people be able to see you play those live, maybe in a different way this this yeah. time around? Well, I've already had a big experience where when the band did split, I you know we did split up for about nine years, and uh, yeah. you know, and it was that period where I really, you know, I just could not uh, touch any of any of the the cast hits. I mean, I just couldn't touch them. The thought of playing them made me feel fucking sick. You know, I just, yeah. I didn't, whether that was the fact of, I think I wholeheartedly fell out with myself of that time. Right. And I needed to, to be, to make my own peace with myself. And I didn't want to parody that, that young kind of gung-ho, kind of in-your-face scouse kind of leader of the band you know i needed to just drop it and 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 find out who the fuck i was you know you know because yeah. it's like 
you, you, it's funny because you get cast as a certain player, um, a certain character in the show, in the big show, the enemy show that. Yeah, it's the, like the, the Oasis the... versus Blur versus Pub all versus this, Suede yeah. versus Cast, exactly, yeah. We, we were young and all this, and it's like, you know, and all of a sudden, you, you, you know, without realising it, that's become part of your fucking psyche. So the whole thing, I had to drop the whole thing because I was, I was not into who I was perceived to be, you know, and all that. And, all, and uh, so I, I picked, I went on for about nearly a decade, uh, and then I started playing the songs again and I made my peace with it and I've never had any problems since and the, the feeling I've had with the, the old, the classic tracks of cast, they've been like, um, when we're performing them the last so many years, I kid you not when I say they feel like they're just brand new songs. I don't yeah. know what to say apart from when I'm singing Sandstorm and All Right and Walk Away, uh, Live the Dream and all them songs, it just feels like there's no time, that it, time doesn't exist and it just feels as fresh as a daisy. And that's why I think that energy that we were discovering on stage, I told you this looseness at the beginning of the conversation, this looseness in performance, this conduit things, uh, you know, I've done a, a lot of discovering, self-discovery recently on the sense of stop trying to squeeze the life out of it. Stop trying to perform. Stop trying to sing the songs and stop trying to impress and, and give people what you think they need. Be Enjoy still. It, Be still and let it fucking flow out. Let the song yeah. fill the sail. And it looks, you, should, you feel like you're doing nothing. But actually, you're performing better than ever. It's like this conduit, conduit of being in the moment and the song takes care of itself and it's effortless. It's fucking effortless. Yeah, no, no. You mean it's like if, if, if you enjoy it, everyone else can see that you're enjoying what you're yeah. doing and that and just it works so, so much better. You're on a, a different level. Than, yeah, but it's even a bit more than kind of, oh, this is fun. It's like a, a yeah. true um, like a discipline. <laughs> yeah. it's like a zen discipline yeah, yeah, yeah. You, because it's it's like you've got to let go of of the of performing you've got to let go of trying to remember the lyrics you've got to let go of trying to hit the right notes you've got to let go of playing in time because they all take care of themselves so it's no, no, it's totally me. i mean it's, it's different but it's like when i do an interview i'm yeah. like i've got to write down every single name every single thing otherwise yeah. i'm going to forget it but if i just just kind of like you said they yeah. just let it all go yeah. It just yeah. comes, it just comes by, it comes naturally, yeah. Well, they're the best ones. So I'm having real, real great moments. And I think having them moments with the band in the last couple of years, genuine moments live, see, you know, and seeing the band and feeling the energy has also been a influ an inspiration to kind of go, we need to write a fuck, I need to go now and, and pick this up again, pick it up, you know, and genuinely try and write a, song, a seminal record for this band because they fucking deserve it, you know, in the sense of, you know, I'm their songwriter. They're, 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 yeah. they're my band, we're our band. You know, if, I, if I'm going to write another record, that's, it had to be of a certain energy and a certain kind of level. And, you know, to, I did say, you know, to the band, when we were doing this project and recording it, you know, one of my things was like, you've got to look at this record as the last thing I'm ever going to fucking do with you. This is the last record cast are ever going to make. Now, I don't know if it is. Yeah. But I fucking meant it like that. That because yeah. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to dig deep and find a place again that is as energetic as all change, but as but. But, but move, a, a massive move on, and you know, you yeah. know, maybe this energy and this band, this this album will inspire me. I've got, I know, well, you know, I know what where I was at, and I, I can feel the rhythms. I know what it would have to be like. So I don't know for sure, but I definitely use that. You know, I I, I looked into Keats and Skins' eyes and I said, you've got to think of this as the last, you know, the last guitar you're going to play, Skin for Cast. It's got to be that fucking good. Yeah. It can't be like just an all right fucking song or an all right rhythm. Keith, you can't, it can't be 
all right and da -da -da, i guess i'm all right yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the thing the thing is it's um it's easy you know look there's chord structures and there's things that go that are sympathetic and in harmony to it it doesn't mean it's the fucking it's the it's the right one but you can have things that are okay they work diddle mm -hmm. that and you all will leave the room everyone thinks so oh, that's really nice i've got it nailed it, we had to raise the fucking bar and go no yeah. this has to be primary fucking color shit every single thing we do has to work you know it's got to sonically if it's going to be guitar then it's got to do something the drums they cannot just go to, 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 no. they've got to lift they've got to blend and mold and lift and go wherever it goes and i then have to you know, I think this is the best vocals I've done. I think it's the best rhythm guitar playing I've done. It's the bass. I had a lot of fun. I mean, I, you know, I had fun. I've never had fun making a fucking record. I promise you. It's always been a tedious... Um, really? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it's been a tedious experience always. One, because maybe I was unsure of myself. And two, because the whole process of doing the fucking drums takes three weeks. It's a pain oh, in the yeah. ass. To get it. Yeah. You know, so this was... This was, we just went in, used all the in-house in drums, and now we took two guitars, one each, me and Skip, Keith took a drum pedal and some sticks, and we were ready to fucking go. We had nothing to lose, but, um, yeah, it was, you know, we do the acoustics, and, and you just say, John, do you want to do the bass? And I kind of had an idea, because I knew the chord sequence and all. I knew the song better than anyone. And I, I he literally, he, I'd have a run through, and then he'd go, let's go for the take. So whilst I kind of knew what I was doing, also didn't have a clue in the sense of, you know, I, I kind of tried something and I go, ah, oh, that feels good. So that'll be that bit, whatever. And um, they were all got, like, you know, made up with that sort of spontaneity. And, um, but I, it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was like, you know, and I've got youth there, who's the bass player of Killing Joke. Who I was actually yeah, no, he, he, I mean, he, he, I think he produced Shed Seven's new album well, he, as well, he, just he, recently. He, no? he's, he's done a lot of good, good stuff yeah. over the years. He's been, to, you know, he's, but he, I was like, even going to say, maybe you play some bass, you know, when this was before the session started. But once I kind of got on it, it just became a, a go to John, should we do the bass? Yeah, dunk, give us a run through. Yeah. And then he press record, and we've kind of We'd, we'd have a baseline or two by, 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 you know, next take or two. And it was just like, yeah, this is great, you know. And I, I haven't played bass on a, on a record since, since, since the, the last. Yeah. And so even little things like that just energised me, just made me think that I'm doing the right thing, that time is in the right space, everything is in the right space. Youth, Alan McGee, the band, where we recorded, how we recorded the songs I had, it's like everything that even Republic, the record company, you know, we, we I, I can't remember Cass being in such a, a place where we had so many great people around us willing us to make a fucking good record. Yeah, so you know, I, I, I can't, I can't, um, I don't want to fathom it out, but it certainly felt like the cosmos was, was, was listening and, and the universe. It, it, it doesn't do desperate thing. It, you know, if you're desperate and needy, it generally doesn't reflect what you want. It doesn't give you, you know, it's when you kind of know that you're plugging into a deep, sub-loose rhythm that you start to get the things that you want out of the, 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 the ideas or the project or the art that you're, 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 you're looking towards. And I feel that this has all them sort of things working for it as against we're not swimming against the tide on this record yeah we're not we're not we're not struggling in shallows we're not out of our depth we're very much fucking playing sailing whilst riding the rapids you know, if we have to it's fucking great i mean you know it, i mean it's coming out in about 10 days so i just i'm happy people are going to hear it and then um i don't know what i'm going to do really <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna go you're gonna go fast Calling, 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 calling.